Is he really the home run that, that many believe him to be? He is. And I think he's clearly the best prospect in this draft. But I also think you have to know what you're getting. He's a different cat. I mean, he's not like your prototypical guy who's coming out in the draft who's going to be a top 10 pick and, and the obsession with football, which he has. He, he will work hard. He cares about the game. He loves the game. But he loves other things. He has a lot of other interests. And so the only thing that you would, I would look at to say would be interesting is when he gets to Cleveland, mm -hmm. assuming he's the first pick, which I assume he will be, you've got a defensive coordinator in Greg Williams who is the loudest, most foul mouth coordinator in all of football. And he's going to be dealing with Miles just every single day. So making sure that you have the right coaches and, and support system in there and, and figuring out a way to bring him along properly, I think, is going to be important. But from a talent perspective, this guy is everything he's being hyped up to be. He's got a chance to be one of the elite pass rushers in the league. Trubisky? Mitchell. This isn't even a question. It's just tr Trubisky. What, what are we talking about here? Really talented. Okay. Chance to be a very, very good starter in the league. Quick release, mobile. He's got the pocket poise and presence that most young quarterbacks don't have. I'm scared to death, though, because it's 13 starts. And it's just not a body of work that you're used to dealing with when you're looking at a, potentially a top 10 draft pick at the quarterback position. And the other issue that keeps on tugging at me is that there's not the, the presence there with him. He's not a vocal, loud leader. He's not a, a guy who's going to get, you know, really in, in people's faces. And he doesn't have this presence about Command him. And the huddle, all that stuff. Right. But he, but he does have a great understanding of the game. He picks up things quickly. So it, it just goes back and forth. That's why I don't have a first-round grade on any of these guys. Uh -huh. But I really believe if you take one of them at the right spot and you're not passing up a talent, that, and, and most importantly, that you're not pushing them into the lineup too early and forcing them to do something that they're just not ready to do. It would be like me to tell, tell you go do a different job. You're plenty talented to do it. Yeah, I'm really talented. Very talented. But... <laughs> You just don't know the language. You Understood. don't know the verbiage. You don't know what you need to do in terms of the preparation for it. I think the, the, the biggest question mark heading into this draft right now is, given the, the storyline of this last week, are all these red flags, whether it's diluted samples or whether it's you know, accusations of sexual assault, which are being investigated mm -hmm. but no charges yet. I mean, how impactful are these red flags to, we're talking about potential first-round picks? Well, I mean, when, when you're talking about a, a day-two prospect punching a girl in the face, and being accused of that, knocking her tooth out. I mean, I take him off the board, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about the, the Con, uh, Gary and Conley, the cornerback from Ohio State, and, and potential rape charge. And, and we, it's unfortunate in that if he did nothing wrong, you just don't have enough time to figure it out as an organization. I talked to an organization today. They had to break up a meeting, and they got a few people together to try to figure out what their strategy was and plan was to try to get all the information they could so that they could go into the draft feeling like they can make an educated decision on whether to take him at some point, maybe not in the first round, but maybe some, some point later, or just to stay away completely. Because you could be talking, anyone is on a, a charge like this, a rape charge, you, you could be talking about him going to jail and, never, and he never plays it down for you and not in a play, player you don't want on your team. Or you could be talking about something that was horrific to, that happened to him because this was an allegation that did not occur. Like a, a Collins from Collins, LSU. Exactly. Lyle Collins, the, the offensive guard, who was a free agent just ask and has become him, yeah. a starter for the Dallas Cowboys. Right. But, but I mean, it's just it's, it's amazing how many different prospects whose names people know and whose names all the front office people know suddenly have questions that are, that are just popping up. And how is that impacting guys of whom there are no questions? I assume they're bulleting up the boards. It, it, there are very different concerns. You know, we're talking about a diluted sample during a drug test at the combine versus some of these other very, very serious charges. I think when you're talking about a Jabril Peppers from Michigan, I don't think that it's going to affect his draft stock very much. I think when the due diligence is done, and, and so much has already been done, he's still probably going to be a late first to early second round prospect, which is what we expected. Reuben Foster, there's concern with baggage off the field. This guy loves the game. He's going to show up and work every day. And I still think he's going to be a top 15 pick. I think so the parachute's lot. Indianapolis with that 15th pick. The 2017 NFL Draft, April 27th through the 29th, on ESPN.